Okay, this has been sitting in my uh, parts bin for a while here. I haven't really had the chance to address it yet. Uh, it's just another Game Boy Color I picked up cheap uh, from either Japan for you on eBay or Yahoo Auctions. I honestly don't remember at this point. I've had it going on three months now, give or take. Um, I haven't done anything with it. If I if it has if it's anything like the last few Game Boys I've picked up, it was listed as not working and when I got it, dropped some batteries in it. These aren't the same batteries, but whatever. Same difference. Turned it on, lo and behold, works fine. It even has sound. I don't know how well this you can make this out on camera, but there is something kind of weird going on with the display. It's much more obvious in person. Uh, if you look directly at it, let me uh Move that light a little. So there's less glare. Oh, that didn't help at all. Let's try this approach then. Okay, anyway, you can see it's working, but if you look directly at it, there's, uh, I don't know, it looks kind of like there's interlacing lines visible. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. Uh, anyway, I noticed the effect was most obvious with my EverDrive here. Of course, this is just an irregular. Uh, OEM cart with a custom label, but this is an EverDrive. There's my micro SD card. If we pop this in here and go into the menu as soon as it loads, I don't know how well you can see that, or as the case may be, not see that. The menu items are barely there or if they're there they're kind of scrambled let's kill that light too no that didn't help at all i'm sorry i'm still trying to figure out this lighting thing i think it was better before i started messing with it anyway you can see options recently played uh what is that random game cheats device info but you can only see that as i'm scrolling through the list for reference, here's what it looks like on a Game Boy Color that's working perfectly fine. Uh, this is another one I picked up. I've restored it mostly. Uh, functionally, I've restored it, but cosmetically it still needs some work. But anyway, here's how the menu is supposed to look on a non-backlit Game Boy Color. So I'm not 100% sure what the issue is, uh, but I'm hoping it's power related. I notice the power light when I'm using this thing really flickers on and off. Um, you know, it's it's crazy how much the variation is. You know, sometimes it'll be lit up brightly. Most of the time it won't be though. So I'm hoping it's power switch related. But anyway, I figure it's finally time to start working on this with uh, Ben Ben's Freckle Shack shipping soon. In fact, I think mine shipped either today or yesterday. Um, but another thing I ordered, I fallen off the deep end here and I've been browsing Taobao. I found the, uh, backlit Game Boy Color screen on Taobao. And this is the, uh, this is the one that everyone went crazy about a year, two, maybe three years ago. Um, it was basically the first backlight mod for the Game Boy Color that I know of even before the... AGS 101 LCD and uh, you know uses that that supposedly rare cell phone screen and like four times linear scaling and supposedly it looks really good and you know people found them on Taobao but there are like hundreds of orders but only like 50 of them shipped or something like that I don't really know all the details I don't care too much to be honest either uh, but anyway apparently the production picked back up again and uh well i seized that opportunity to order one and it shipped yesterday so as soon as that arrives i'll need a game boy color to drop it into and now that leads me to what i'm going to do with this so if i can't fix this with the uh just by cleaning up the power switch here which is you know nine times out of ten you get a game boy that's working a little bit funnier, has some power-related issues. That's usually what you need to do. 
Uh, if that doesn't fix it, I'm going to swap out the screen with my uh, red Game Boy here. See if that fixes it, and if that's the case, then, well, when I install the backlight, that should be fine as well. And if that doesn't fix it, then I'll just swap the whole Game Boy with the red Game Boy, and uh, we'll leave this one as, leave it for parts. So you don't have to take it entirely out of the case here. I like to, and there's two reasons for that. First is because I don't want to accidentally touch the side of the case with my soldering iron and ruin it. Uh, but the second reason I'm taking it out of the case in this particular case is because this thing's kind of gross and I want to take the opportunity to clean it. So I'll put it back together for testing, but I'm not actually going to like screw it together and everything because uh, I'm going to take the time to get the old warm water and soap bath. See if I can't get it cleaned up a little. Okay. It's been a while since I've done the Game Boy Color here. Oh no. I just knocked over my little container full of screws. For another console I was working on. I think it's going to be alright though. I didn't go anywhere except all over my desk. Okay. Cool. That's off. And I'm going to do the same thing I like to do with all my other consoles here. Turn that light back on so I can see. I'm going to bend the tabs in a little bit. Yeah, my colors are a lot more difficult because the shielding is so much thicker. Okay, and then make it sort of like more of an M shape instead of a square bracket. Okay, that's done. Pull that out of here. That actually looks relatively clean. Hmm, that's not good. Well, I mean, I guess it is good, but I already have half a cotton swab here. I was cleaning something else earlier. If that's not my issue, I hope the screen is. Another thing I suppose I can try, I forgot to mention before, is adjusting this little potentiometer down here. Because if I had a Game Boy Advance with that issue, adjusting the potentiometer would nine times out of ten resolve that. I just haven't seen that actually work on a Game Boy Color. But then again, I don't really do a lot of work on Game Boy Colors. Just cleaning off the wiper. And that is surprisingly clean. I'm going to try the back of the cotton swab too. Eh, good enough. Let's go over it one more time with this part. Okay. So now I'm going to take this and tweezers that are there, bend that up a little, bend that up a little. On a Game Boy Color, unlike a Game Boy Advance, there's like, there's two different wipers and two different sets of contacts. I'm pretty sure they're both in parallel, so you only need one or the other. And that should help with longevity, but doesn't always seem to be the case. I'm going to hold that down a little, try to clean it because the top of it actually looks kind of dirty. 
I don't know if it's from my table or what. Okay. And this shielding, unlike Game Boy Advance ones that I've taken apart recently, is directional. This side is kind of flat. And this side has some like, I don't know, some weird protrusions, a little pattern on it. Back side, the, the flat side goes towards the outside. And the, uh, I guess, pattern side goes towards the CPU. I'm going to go ahead and snap that down. And then I'm going to use my tweezers to hold it. And my iron to kind of push it down onto the pad here. Okay. So that side. Do the same thing over here. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to add a little bit more solder, uh, but in most cases, there's more than enough there already. Okay. Ooh, that is really stiff. I like that. Okay. Interesting to note that the board itself appears a little bit yellowed. The D-pad, A, B, and start and select are actually white, and those, I guess, are underneath the the little rubber membranes. Um, ooh, that's kind of gross. I wonder if that's from, but I wonder if this coloring is from UV or something. All right, I'm gonna take this casing here, put that membrane back in, start putting this back together here. Put the screen in. And I'm just going to go ahead and put in one of these three screws. There's one of the Game Boy Advance screws sticking to my screwdriver. Let's stick the speaker in. Okay. We're going to put in the center one by the D-pad. Alright, and then, oh, I suppose I'll put in the power switch so I can try it out. in there and what I do with my EverDrive. Oh, it's right here, underneath the lamp. Okay, now I'll turn that off, drop some batteries in, and let's try it out. Doesn't even work now. What did I do wrong? That's in right. That's in right. Well, maybe that was it. Hmm. Oh, I see what happened. This side popped up on the power switch. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to add some more solder there. Okay. And my tweezers. Bizarre. I was just saying there's usually enough solder and then go figure that happened there we go nice and saturated do the other side just for good measure Something. Put the back back on. 
throw my EverDrive. All right. Ugh. Sorry. You can probably tell I'm a little bit tired. Got to put the power switch in so I can actually turn it on. Okay. Let's try it again. Alright, it flipped right on, but now I'm noticing that whole interlacing issue looks even worse. You still can't see the menu options. Alright, so we're going to try this a bit differently. Pop the bottom off, the power switch out before I lose it. And now I'm going to try throwing my other Game Boy Color around. I'm going to try this battery holder so I can power it without the back on because I don't have a little AC adapter. That's the ground. That's the positive. I'll stick that back in. And that work that is too big Did that work that work okay I'll flip that on or not oh fucking moron you gotta put the batteries in the, uh, the right way one of these guys backwards. Okay. Try that again. There we go. Get that in there. Try giving that a spin. I can see it changing, but all it really does for this console here is adjust the contrast of the screen. So this is almost like having that second dial on a Game Boy Pocket or a original Game Boy, the DMG, where you can adjust the contrast of the screen. Oh, that's in fact on the silk screen. It has the exact same value, VR2. If you take apart a Game Boy Pocket or a well, actually, I haven't taken apart DMG, so I don't know this for sure. But anyway, on a Game Boy Pocket, the contrast dial is labeled VR2 on the silk screen. Okay, that's my try wheel driver. So, since both the potentiometer and the power switch did nothing to help this screen, we're going to try a new screen and I know this Game Boy works perfectly fine well it works perfectly fine now uh, I had to replace a lot of parts on this Game Boy and ironically in the end it may have been easier to just use the uh, parts console that I used to fix this one and just fix the parts console with parts from this one This Game Boy has new button or new contacts, new cart reader, new volume wheel, new speaker. Well, I suppose it's not that much. I'm just gonna take all these screws out, throw them in one big pile. screw. That was weird. Okay. Take that out so I don't lose it. Take that out. Now to be careful with this Game Boy. The bail is broken. So it just kind of comes right out. I don't know if you saw that, but it's it's supposed to stick with the Game Boy, but it doesn't. 
Okay. For some reason, this didn't select it, though. Oh, gotta take out this screw. And I'm just gonna put this Game Boy into the red housing. Swap the screen. I'm gonna have to take take the screens out eventually, well at least the screen and the atomic purple one, so I can clean up the casing. It's just easier to dunk the whole thing into a warm soapy bath or something than to try and clean around the screen. And again, just putting in one screw here. And I'll use my battery holder again. And my computer drive. And now this is the first Game Boy, but with the second Game Boy screen. And already that looks significantly better. And look at that, you can see the menu. How bizarre. And so if we adjust this potentiometer, you can see or at least I can see in person. I don't know how well this is going to come out on camera. It seems to... Oh, yeah, there it goes. See, that's kind of how it looked beforehand. But if we keep spinning it... I think I went past where I wanted to go. There we go, I think. All right, I just want to get this dialed in. Eh, that's good enough for now. Well, that looks significantly better, and the power LED is pretty constant there. It's not flickering around so much. It's not very bright, probably because these batteries are a little low. But that's fine. That's to be expected. Okay, so that's what my Game Boy needs. It just needs a new screen, which is going to be perfectly fine because I got that Taobao screen coming in pretty soon and I got Ben Ven's new Freckle Shack coming in pretty soon. So maybe I'll backlight both these Game Boys. I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop it out of this red shell. Um, finish taking apart the purple shell, get that cleaned up, and that should be ready for the next video here. Thanks for joining me.